Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Dual Hearts. In the last episode we hit the sheep switch, and our reward is this Titan Pathway, with a cannon on the end that never fires while you're on it. I'm not really sure what's going on. You can actually hear it fire after you've already left, and oh by the way, that's uh, the third receptacle for that dream energy, you may recall we triggered one early on, but I haven't really found yet. And now this looks like a combat sequence, but it's actually uh, some puzzle solving by Fisher Price. You may recall the tile matching puzzle from Val's Dream, where we just had to drop a little sun tile and a little sun platform. This time we've got the exact same thing, but the next level up meaning we've got two tiles to match. It sort of makes me wonder if the uh, society from this game is the same as the one from Idiocracy, if this actually constitutes some sort of test of intelligence. And as it turns out, this isn't even all. They're next leveling us. Anyway, no reason to show this in great detail. Let's uh, speed this up a little bit and get on with our lives. Sun, moon, star, blah blah blah. Challenging, I know. See, the path leads up the uh, column over there, and I kind of was hoping that you would just be able to walk up. It would be like relatively etcherous. Kind of a nice way to take advantage of the unusual geometry of the area, but I don't know, I guess no one wanted to program additional physics after already having a curved level like this. As it turns out, the jump to the platform is actually too high for you to make even when you're on Bumble, so you still have to push the block. I don't know. It's a bit too much for me. I don't think I can handle it. Hey, crack platforms. This is weird only because these are the exact same platforms that we crossed to get the tummy up piece all the way back at the beginning of the level. Ring in here. Actually, no, there's a ring next to it, but there's nothing inside the apple. That's weird. Anyway, the platforms back at the start of the level didn't move at all. For some reason, these collapsed. And there's a ring. And a spike block. Nothing too rough here. It's even uh, in the middle of nowhere, so there's no issues with the camera getting stuck on anything. And again, path is looking down, but we can't actually go down. Like, walk down. There's a target here. We do not have any sort of magic target, target shooting device, so there's nothing to do with this. It's kind of odd that they put it right here, because you can just poke it with the spear, but it still doesn't do anything. They probably should have left it hanging somewhere just to uh, prevent the player from thinking there's actually something they're supposed to do right now that they in fact can't. Anything behind here? No. So let's see if we can get a good angle to jump down from this ledge. Signs point to no. Yeah, so there's a ring there. This is the first time I actually saw the rings are actually sprites. I've never actually really like, close enough to see. There's a line of them that fall down. I think I can reach that platform, but it turns out I can't. And our reward for doing that is fight against two more turtle faces. At this point I've really gotten hang of this. It turns out you actually can kill them in one combo after stunning them once. You just have to alternate weapons or be really fast. Check out that cracked pyramid. Despite the fact that a lot of things are cracked in this level, that's the only one you can actually do anything with, although we can't do it right now. I will be back for all of those pyramids. There are several of them. Again, a little bit, we did pick up that first piece of green energy. We still haven't even encountered the pieces to put in hold the second and third. And uh, I don't know why these blocks are here, because you can't actually climb back up. So our only recourse now to get to the start of the level is actually to fall off the side. Some water, again, some stuff at the bottom, just like in Sheep's Room that we can't reach yet, and some enemies that we can't fight. There's a mosaic here, and you're supposed to be able to climb. Honestly, the whole thing, maybe it's just me, looks like someone trying to blur out something really vulgar. There's something on top of here, but it takes me, it takes me forever to figure out how to actually get up. I don't do it on this try, but note on the left, you can't actually make it, Bumble can't jump high enough. Right, same problem. If you're astute, you can probably figure out exactly what we're supposed to do. But I did not on this first iteration. Check it out, there's little tracks. Bumble does, in fact, track water after he gets out of the uh, pool, which is kind of cool. Interesting touch. There's a notch here, but uh, as it turns out, getting in there doesn't actually put you any closer to climbing the top of this thing. You can jump around and get to the other side, but we can do that the other way too. So the long story short is that after I opened this peach up, I believe there's nothing inside it. I spent about five more minutes trying to climb from this side. Uh, I eventually fell off, and then spent five minutes getting back here, but the good news is I picked up that one ring I missed trying to fall down from the library. Anyway, moving on, there's three more cans here that also don't fire until you're already well past, and you can actually see one fire. Now we're back on the other side of the mosaic with the exact same sort of blurred out, I don't know, whatever it is. There's one ring we can pick up, but absolutely nothing else. It's even harder to get up here than it is on the other side. In fact, it's really impossible to get to the top on this side. 
But at least we found the uh, second stone piece for the Dream Energy, the yellow one, the moon. That's all the way back at the start, near, near the apple enemies. We'll pick that up on the way back. Let's see what's over here. A couple rings. Some spikes. And she... Hello. Yeah, there was a sheep that a switch that responds to sheep on the other side of the mosaic. So this is our first escort mission. Basically, uh, a means for them to shoehorn in another use for the defensor. Basically, the sheep will sort of move along the path at his own pace. You can't call him or anything. And for once, these cannons finally actually work. If we stand in front of them, or if anything stands in front of them, including the sheep, they will fire cannonballs continuously. And obviously, our goal here is to block them. Pretty simple. There's no there's no real penalty for missing other than the sheep going back to the start, so there's no reason to screw up. There's nothing, there's nothing to show off, I should say. And as soon as he gets to the other side, that's it. Puzzles automatically solved. I was actually kind of hoping the sheep switch would trigger something that lets me climb the mosaic, and that was part of the reason why I put sort of the emphasis on doing this now. I didn't really bother trying to climb it before. But as it turns out, it just opens that path. This is a stark opposition to the first sheep switch that gave us a puzzle to solve and then a timed pathway. So I guess this guy feels like being a little bit nicer to it. And it's about now that I finally figured out exactly what I was supposed to do here, or it sort of occurred to me what I might be wanting to try to do, which is there's a tiny little notch right there around the corner. It's just high enough for Rumble to reach if you jump all the way around three corners. But again, since his hitbox is huge, this is actually really hard to do, since you're basically motioning him around three corners. And every single one of them has to be cleared basically as soon as you can possibly do it. Compared to every other collectible we've picked up in this game, this is actually substantially more difficult, since considering that basically everything has been a matter of just pattern recognition, or has just been given to us straight out. Of course I fall, but as it turns out, that's not as bad as it looks, because the game is a little bit more forgiving here. First time I tried to make it up with, with Bumble, just to be quick. Second try, I believe I tried precision platforming, but since he can't grab onto corners, and these blocks are really thin, it's actually really hard to get up here. On top of that, once you're stuck in between the blocks like that, you can't call Bumble because he's too big to fit in the space. So we have no choice but to try to find a camera angle, plus let's jump up here correctly, which is practically impossible. Or just make the best of what we have. Stab his apple, pick up a gold Esamon. Only the second one we found other than the previous sheep gave us, and get the heck out of here. Yeah, this is the uh, quick way of bypassing these little spike means. It's actually really hard to get a camera shot straight down the center. This is a callback, actually, to the second tutorial from the Sheep Stream. These are the first enemies we've run into that we can't just beat with our holy instrument weapon, the spear and the sword. And it sort of highlights the problem with the fact that you need to throw an Essamon at them, because Bumble will just eat them every time you make them, unless he's very far away. And he, of course, teleports directly next to you. I did manage to get one, and man, he just really wants this. We killed one, we, st we didn't kill the second one. We and uh, did we drop a piece of chocolate, which I believe is worth about 10 Esamons, and of course he's still eating them. But not eating the chocolate that he's probably supposed to eat. No, pick it up, pick it up, don't do that. Oh. Well, anyway, in pursuit of more Esamons, eventually the spiky just lost interest in me, and so we left that little combat scenario. And walked directly into another one. These are unique enemies, they don't reappear. This is the only place in the game you can fight them. I'm not really sure what they are. They're probably supposed to be some sort of sculpture, but I'm a little too far away to actually make any detail out. Of course, they die in two combos, so it's not really cool. I'll drop a couple of bombs. No harm done. They might be scream figures, I can't really tell. They're definitely not David's or any other really common sculpture. And of course our reward for doing all that is yet another butt pound puzzle. This one fooled me at first because I'm an idiot. Pick up that ring, is that a D? Yeah, the circle moves. Not only does it move, but it also moves in opposite directions as you go. So it's almost like it's playing with you. Thankfully I got that first one almost by accident right as it was about to move. This one just flashes. Anyway, puzzle solved. This is actually the last puzzle of the level, so now we can just proceed to the boss. But first, we have to talk to a sheep again. Why wouldn't there be a sheep? He says we're exhausted. He doesn't actually do anything to heal us or anything. He just gives us these five rings, and sort of alludes to the fact that there's a place where we're going to be able to exchange them later on. 
I will be showing that eventually when we come across it. Check out the warp pad. Nothing flashy, just sends us back to the beginning of the level, which will be useful if we fall off the side. Spoiler alert, I do do this, not on camera. You can even see the start from here, it's kinda cool. Let's take care of this. No, not with the sword. It really messes with me to have a weapon map to the, s to the square button, because it's kind of unusual for games. So if I have sort of a bad habit of usually using the sword when I'm supposed to be using the spear. I probably should switch them because the spear is used mostly to solve puzzles compared to the sword. Well, the sword is more useful in combat situations. Anyway, back to the start. I'll lead you back to the spot where we can pick up those two pieces of dream energy that we spawned by hitting those pieces into the receptacles. Also go into this little water area. There's an apple down here, but I don't believe we have the ability to attack underwater or, or in water yet, so I'll have to return there later. I guess it's part of the benefit of, of looking at these videos after I've played the game, because it's really easy to make mental notes of what I'm supposed to do when I return to it. Hello, sheep. Moving on. As you recall, this is where you fought those three apple enemies before. This is actually a really good grinding spot, and after running into some kind of challenge where it's actually really helpful to have our weapons at level 3 or 4, I'll probably return here. Because, I mean, they're ridiculously easy to give two ace bombs. They group together, so it's easy to hit them all at once. They have basically no HP. And they respawn all the time. Going around, here's the uh, moon receptacle. This is a bit of an this is a bit of an odd thing. Uh, so if you're trying to teleport Bumble underneath you, occasionally the game gets sort of wedged between trying to teleport him next to you and trying to teleport him beneath you, and he just won't show up. You can call him repeatedly. It's a little odd. But uh, I guess a few bugs here and there are expected. There aren't any, like, sort of game-crashing bugs in this game, so I guess I can forgive a little bit of a, an oddity every once in a while. There's another one of those pyramids, I don't know if you know, it's that here, right? Anyway, here's the star and our last piece of dream energy that we can pick up on our first run through this level. So let's get back to the very end. Again, it's... Camera. Camera, please. No. Grr. Screw it, I'll go around. Show this off. There's a ring behind this watch. It didn't really occur to me while that why that watch was there in the first place. But it's apparently to keep you from getting 100% completion. Apparently that ring is a common hangout for a lot of people. Actually spotting. Let's see what the hint is. Block after hitting your opponent. Brilliant. Never would have guessed that one. Anyway, let's see what the heck we're fighting. Let's see what uh, the manifestation of Florence's uh, subconscious issues turned out to be. I mean, the level's pretty weird, so the boss will probably be pretty weird too, right? We might be correct. Check that guy out. This is apparently her master. He's presumably based off of Salvador Dali, which we'll get from uh, his name. He's got the crazy mustache, just like the real Dali. He's also, I don't know, he's also got kind of a Jackson Pollock thing going on, like the action painting, where it looks like he can paint with both his head and his beard. And we'll see his actual painting style over the course of this fight. Yeah, whatever details. Check it out, crayons. I mean, we can't really paint. Do some finger painting, maybe. Yeah, she doesn't seem to think it's weird that we're here. Thankfully, I guess she must she must rationalize it, considering that we just she just met us. Therefore, of course, we would show up in her next dream. Anyway, this is a race, effectively. There is very little actual combat. The boss does not have a health have a health meter of any kind. His name is Mag Dolly, which I guess is supposed to be based off of the original translation, which I assume is some portmanteau of magician and some artist's name. They work a lot better in the original Japanese language, but right now it kind of makes him sound like a goofy Pokemon. Anyway, the, the battle here has a very simple pattern. He'll do his spin attack, and then you knock him away with the sword, which I failed to do here, but I'll get it on the end. After that, he'll do a dash attack, and then he'll teleport away and drop. A health pickup that gives you two HP. It's practically impossible to die in this fight for that reason. So basically, the only losing condition is if he completes his painting before Florence completes hers. And of course, his spin attack that you saw can actually knock her off. In addition to helping him actually complete the painting, they go back and forth, and you know, their each version sort of resolves over the course of this canvas. You'll notice that her supposed boss or, or teacher. Uh, is pretty clearly like an impressionist, a realist 
painting an actual photo of Bumble while she's basically a cutest and a really abstract portrait. I guess it's a really interesting sort of interpretation of her story to say that she's basically her world version of, for example, Pablo Picasso, like one of the her first abstract artists underappreciated in her time. And this boss fight is basically like her fear of not living up to her master's expectations and becoming a success on her own. Also possibly the fact that in the real world she can't find real inspiration or a real subject for her work while in her dreams she has this whole abstract landscape that's a little bit closer to what she wants to paint. I think it's an interesting story. They kind of screwed it up a little bit by giving the boss uh, the name of the, one of the world's most famous surrealist painters, even though he's very clearly a realist painter, but I guess out of all the details, they could have messed up. It's not really that big of a deal. At the very least, it's a recognizable painter's name. At least they got that right. It looks like him. I can know the resemblance. Anyway, we won. Obviously, we didn't actually win anything. We just basically got Florence a little bit more confidence in her own painting. I highly doubt that her teacher was telekinetically connecting with her during this fight or something. Maybe he would actually care, but you never know. That resolved a little nicely, and they dumped out a whole bunch of junk. This is like Christmas. Of course, Bumble just goes and eats one right away, because that's basically all he does in this game. I guess that's what his voice is supposed to sound like. Jeep. The dash tag. There actually is a tutorial. The sheep does not give it now, which is kind of strange. We'll have to go seek it out manually, which we will do because there's a collectible that we picked up. All right. And it is, this should look familiar because we picked them both up previously, except piece All by piece. Right. A heart container and a tummy container. And our full reward. There it is. Nothing around, nothing around the sides. Some of the boss arenas do have collectibles in them. All this right. one does not, apparently. The indigo key. Now we can pick up our second major item. And there's the poor lad here, so let's finish up the Thorns Dream. See you tomorrow, and let's play Duel Hearts.